This is the darker side of shop maintenance. All my lights in here are fluorescent because when I did my shop, the cheap four foot LEDs just weren't as prepped. One of these lights has been flickering for uh, a couple weeks. Probably this one because the end of it is black. That usually is a bad sign. But it's annoying too because if one of these fluorescents goes out, the fixture doesn't work at all. I think that speaks to the cheapness of light rather than how these things are supposed to work. Oh, come on. Well, could both be bad. I guess both could be bad. Let's see. Alright, let's assume both are bad. They've been flickering. Like every time I switch it on, it flickers. And I just have been hoping that it'll hold on for indefinitely because eventually it'll flicker and then it'll work and really at this point i should scrap all these lights and get leds that's what is in my other garage but you know, not enough years have passed that i feel comfortable doing this it's not comfortable but you know spent i don't know 150 bucks making lights and i don't think i've got my money for it well huh Great, 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 great. Well, let's get to why I actually started this video, which was not to see, have you seen me change lights? So you see now why that light being out, a bit of an issue more so than usual. So this has been my battery charging station. I've got, I'm getting more into the power tools, but I had double A's, triple A's, chargers, and then chargers for what used to be just a month ago, just a drill. Now I've got another charger for, gotten some other power tools. And this shelf, it's always been a bit high. You know, having to, to look in my, see how many double A's I have? You know, I always gotta pull it down. It's just, it's a little high. You know, you kind of want it right here. There's cords about, and you know, this is kind of my tool wall. All my tools are plugged in here. Can't quite reach to see you putting batteries in there. Just, it's all too high. And then another aspect of it is, this is on the opposite side of my shop. Usually, I'm coming down here to either grab batteries or check on batteries, and I have to walk all the way across the shop to do that. Or, you know, I'm standing at the door, like this charger here, you know, depending on how you're facing it, you can't quite see the lights. They're a little high. They may be behind or in front of something. If you have it turned around, it's against the wall. All this to say, I realized, hey, this would work a lot easier if this stuff was closer to the door. And that's one thing I love about having a shop. You you plan, you think, all right, this is how I want it. Then you use it and you realize, oh, what I thought I wanted, not exactly what I wanted. Like this, it's kind of an afterthought. Like, oh yeah, I got this. When I moved in, when I set up this shop and did it, I just had this charger, this battery. That's it gotten into rechargeable double A's and triple A's because you know you just go through them so quick it seems like a waste to keep buying batteries not buying batteries more this is more than paid for itself it's been great uh, you know just got some another charger red charger in the back just got that getting into some more power tools and so slowly this space is growing and eventually I'm gonna have because right now I got one spare tool battery there's gonna be more it's coming in the future I'm just looking for the good deal the right deal I'm a deal person I want a deal and so I, I figured out where I want this stuff and I've been rearranging and sorting and figuring out where I want it, how to make that work because all my power, all my stuff is on this wall. I have nothing on the other wall when I redid the shop. In the layout, all my power tools over here, I've got some receptacles above my workbench. Well, I've got, I've got eight outlets above my workbench. I thought that's all I need. I don't really need any on the other wall because that's all storage and things. After I finished, I thought, oh, you know, it might be nice to put one there. Wasn't a huge issue. But now I'm like, oh, I want one there. I really do. I don't think it's going to be that bad. I think we can put one there fairly easily. So let's look at what I want to do. So we're on the other side of my shop, and I think I want to be in a configuration like this, where this shelf, here to here, this is where my batteries stay. Now what was on the shelf? Basically a bunch of stuff. This shelf's kind of my catch-all. Whatever, whenever you have a shelf, a table, or something next to an entrance door, you know, you come in that door, you put stuff down, it goes here. So I have lots of stuff here. I've got a table below here too. There's also a catch-all. Just the more space you have, the more it's going to catch. So I cleared it up. And really, I didn't really get rid of much stuff. It's just a lot of junk. Stuff like most of it I threw away. So I think all the batteries going to be here. Now, do I need shelving and different things? I don't know. Because 
more batteries will be coming as far as power tools go. I may create some kind of stacking, some kind of shelf configuration. I've got the pegboard here. I could potentially could hang stuff if I wanted. Uh, I have raised up some of my tools here to give me some more space here. But I like the setup because I can come in the door of my shop. If I need to grab double A's or triple A's, they're right here. If I'm checking to see the status of the charge, if things are complete, it's all right here. I think the receptacle, I'm going to put somewhere in this area where it's just it's right there. Because I don't have any receptacles on this wall. Nothing at all. There's a receptacle on the other side of this wall, pretty much right there. And I think it's an end run, so I think I can just tag off the end of it, come up the wall, down. I'll cut a hole in my pegboard, and the pegboard's going to be a little bit wider than my receptacle. So I don't know if I'm going to space the box out or just kind of leave it a little inset. Being inset might be good. That way nothing will catch it or hit it. I don't know. That, that I'm thinking on. But I think it's a perfect spot. I think my receptacle is just right in there. And if I need to plug things up, I can. I don't leave my chargers plugged up all the time. I just feel like, oh, am I using like that, that one cent of power that's going to show up on my energy bill? Well, I ain't got to rather save that. I'm a stickler like that. I love this. I, just, I like the setup. I like the location. It's right in the door. If I need to check on something, it's right in there. I don't have to go all the way across the shop to grab stuff right here where I need it. And I didn't really lose anything. Like the stuff is here. Shouldn't have been there. Should have been in the trash. Most of it. Some of the stuff I just put where it should go because it just, oh, yeah, I'll put this somewhere later. And now later's that day. Later just never came. Now I need to figure out if there's a structure on the other side of the wall, can I tag off of that? Because my receptacle on the other side, panel box, is that way. And it goes up. The wire goes all the way across the shop and it comes down. So there's no good place to tag. If I wanted to tag off the end of the receptacle, I'd have to run the wire all the way across the shop. I'd rather not do that. So I'm hoping this other receptacle, I'm hoping I can just tag off into that. I hope that's an end run. It seems like it, but like in this house, you never quite know. That's the joys of figuring out the panel box when you're the, you know, the newer stoner. Make sure you're checking on your panel box. I know exactly what circuit this receptacle is on. I've, it's labeled on the box because I've went through the house and tested things. But even though I know which one it's on, I've already flipped the breaker and tested the circuit to make sure that when the breaker's off, that circuit is definitely off. It for sure is. You know, get a tester, make sure, because you don't want to mess around with it. Especially in this house, when I first moved in, like you'd flip this breaker and this turned off, this over here turned off, and that up there, like, some of it didn't even make any sense. And part of that is tagging off like I'm doing. You're tagging off another receptacle. And then this breaker that is just for this room, all of a sudden it's now for this room too. But I know what I'm doing, and it's okay when I do it. When you know it, no luck. That receptacle on the side of the wall, it is not an end run. It's right in the middle. There's something coming into it. There's something coming out of it. So I can't use it. I mean, you could, you could triple tap it. Don't recommend it. Not going to do it. So now here's the question. I've got a spare breaker in my panel box. And I've shut down part of the whole house to run a line to it. Or maybe I just tap off of the receptacles here. So my receptacles and lights are on separate circuits. So I can turn off my receptacles in this shop, keep the lights on, completely separate, which is good, which is how I planned it. And so now the question is, I'm thinking maybe I tap into my dust collector circuit. I mean, I don't know, would I ever be running the batteries and the dust collector at the same time? Dust collector is a big draw, which I'll put on its own circuit. But I think they could probably run at the same time. I'm not sure I would ever be running at the same time. The alternative is I just tap into my other receptacles, which I've got a bunch of receptacles. I, there should be enough headroom there. I mean, my battery's been running on the other receptacles already. I don't know, but I'm gonna have to go into my ceiling, pull down the ceiling panel, go up there and see which, see my favorite, which wire is which, which one's dust collector, which one is the receptacles. And what I do to tap into it is I would just cut it and you have to put a junction box there whenever you, wires are cut and you have a splice, you've got to put a junction box. So I'd put a junction box to just probably bolt it or screw it just, or nail it rather, to the joist. And that way I've got my wires coming in from this receptacle. I've got the wires going to the rest of my receptacles. I've got all three coming in one place. You splice them, you butt joint, I butt joint, butt joint, not butt joint, is it butt joint? You do a screw nut, butt joint. What is a butt joint? I think I'm thinking when you like crimp with like radios and stuff. You would do a wire nut, put the three wires together. You have to do it in junction box if anything goes wrong. It prevents like pulling the joint apart, which is, which could cause a short, any number of things. Uh, but a junction box and put them all together, all three. Because I think I can just splice it. I think I have a little bit of extra room. I think I put a service loop and everything. Probably did. Probably have some room there. But even if you cut it, well, yeah, if you cut it, you have to have some extra room. I think I've got extra room. I'm trying to think if I don't have extra room, what would I do? I mean, the alternative to that would be you have to shut down the power to the house and you run a little bit longer feed from the panel box to the junction box. I'll have to see what kind of room I have.
I think it'd be better if all my chargers are on one circuit. I mean, the charger could be on its own circuit. That'd also give me freedom to run another circle that way. Or, I mean, the other way would be tough because i got to draw in the way. I don't know. I have to think about that. Hopefully, I've got a loop in the ceiling. I mean, I try to do a service loop before each receptacle box or each junction box or any anything. I always do a service loop just so you need, if you have some extra space, if you need it, some extra length in line. And that's what I need now so I can get this thing going. So now i got to pull down my ceiling panels. I'm looking at them now. Things are kind of kind of tough to get down. Hey. Well, that's odd. If you look in the corner, my light right back there that was off completely is now on. Now, I did replace both bulbs. I'm kind of afraid to mess with it because if I mess with it, will it come on or not come on? I don't know. It's so odd that it was off. Now it's on. No flickering. That's cool. And then he knows it first because when I come to this room, I expect all the lights to be on. It's when they're off. That's it too. Well, that's when I notice. So I've got some potential good news. I was thinking that my my wiring, my circuits went from the box over to the far wall of my shop and then down the wall out to where myself plugged up. I completely forgot. I've got two receptacles above my workbench. And I'm pretty sure that would be the end run because why would I go down the wall, up to the ceiling above my workbench, back to the wall? I think it ends here, which would be great. Puts me very close to my battery station receptacle I want to install. And I need to check that, but I think that's how it is. Because why? I don't think I'd go back and forth. I'm always very efficient on wire anything I'm running. So I think that's it. I'm going to check it. Nice thing is my receptacles are in a different circuit than my lights. So I can cut my receptacles off and check it while still have my lights on it and then I'll see everything and do everything. One more thing I did in my shop. Every receptacle faceplate has B2C9. That is box two circuit nine. I got two boxes. The boxes are labeled box one, box two. And then the circuit's labeled just so you know which is what. Because everything is, all our circuits are on the same circuit except for the dust collector over there. That is on its own circuit. Did I come in here? I bet I came in here. I don't know if that's an end run. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. Would I have come from there here? So I don't know what's going on. I went to the receptacle on this end. It was an end run. Great. Perfect. Been a while since I wired stuff. So I was like, let me look at the receptacle on the other end which is the easiest one to reach, which is why I went to the one on that end, to see how I chained off of that. One to that one, that one looks like an end run. Well, I can't both be end runs. And that made me think, well, did I do a junction box in the ceiling? So that way, instead of like going down and back up the chain, I went to the junction box, and the junction box, the junction box is where it chained, which would save me a bunch of wire. Probably what I did. So now, like, where are the junction boxes? Because there's something up here, that one chains. I'm guessing the next one chains. I don't know. I don't have to move all the ceiling panels. I need to see if I took any pictures of this project because I'm pretty sure I did junction boxes. So that way I didn't have to go down the wall and then back up to change the next one. Just saved me a bunch of wire. I think that's what I did. So I just need to find the closest junction box to this side of the shop. These receptacles above my workbench. The first one definitely changed. I guess let me check the one next to it, see if that chains off too. That was a chore. I finally figured out what is going on. So what I initially did was that I ran the wire from my breaker box over there to the first receptacle in the ceiling above my workbench, that changed to the second receptacle above my workbench. Then that goes to a junction box. From that junction box, it splits three ways, which is the three receptacles on my far wall. So that's what's going on. It took me a minute to figure that out. So I think with all that said, I have a receptacle on the far wall. I think I'm gonna chain off that receptacle because the junction box, I mean, potentially I could chain off the junction box, but I think it's gonna be an easier run off that receptacle. That receptacle is almost right in line with my charging station for a separate one I want to put in. I think based on one joist off, I need to, I'm gonna run from the far wall down the joist. I need to cross one joist and that'll put me right where this needs to be. Whereas if I go from the junction box, I don't know where it is. I mean it's somewhere in that area. But I think I'm gonna have to go through a few joists. I think I'm gonna chain off that one. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. I'm not really putting any additional load on my setup because the battery chargers they're already connected to a different receptacle. I'm that in a receptacle. It's no additional load. So it should be fun. I'm just going to take off a bunch of my ceiling panels. Maybe I can just like unscrew one side of them and just squeeze in there to get the wire. So I just have to run the wire down. You know, put some steps in there just to hold it above because you don't want it, you know, you want the wire above the bottom of your joist. That way there's no way for it to get pinched or cut or anything like that. So I think I put in staples before just to hold it up. And then I'll cross over the joist, come down and reset. That's the plan. We are starting to remove panels. When you look at it, having these panels up here, makes the ceiling look so much nicer, so much brighter. It just looks kind of rough. 
Now it is nice they're easily removable. So now I just need to run some wire. I know where I want my receptacle. Look at that. So I've lined that basically up right with the joist. I'm still going to have a cross, a joist. What is that a main? No, oh, double joist. So I'm going to have to go through that one. I'm going to have to go through that one. Come down. Come right here. So I'm kind of right on that joist right there. I may move that over a hair. I don't really want to move it over twice. I like that I've got a nice open bay here. I don't want to mess with too much stuff. That's where we are. So I'm going to... I might have to pull, I might have to pull down that panel. I am going to pull it down. Look at that. I did that. I think I took the bracket down. Or no, I, yeah. I can disconnected that from that. I think I can make that work. Let's see, do I have access? I'm going to pull that down. Wire running right there. How about that's to my desk lighter? I mean, that's some wiring. How about that's lights and... Well, I don't know, I don't know what the other thing is. You know, I've kind of forgotten what all this stuff is. There's so much stuff in here. Like, hey, what is that? That's just some random wire up there. What the heck does that go to? It goes... Kicks back that way. Huh. And if it doesn't go to anything, why didn't I just take it out? Uh, who knows? That's... I'm not going to worry about it right now. It, it's there. It's just living its life. Who might not interfere? Our stuff goes right there behind the spike. You can't quite see it from this angle. I was trying... At first, I tried to push the wire from the top of the conduit down. You know, let me work with gravity. That sounds great. Having some trouble with that. Let me go... And said, let me go up. And I started spraying it with some... Some water and detergent mix. And I got pretty far. And I hit a stopping point. So I took that and I was like... I realized, man, I got so close to being done... Let me get one more go. Let me spray down really good. Got even closer. Didn't quite make it. Pulled it out. I'm going to take my conduit down. I'm going to take my wire out. I'm going to put both these wires together, feed them through at one time, spray them really good with the soap and detergent. And with the conduit off the wall, I think that'll make things a little easier. This thing's just not going. And I could try to beat my head over it and it'd just be futile. Let's take it down. Let's back it up. You know, my philosophy is always this. If you're pushing and you can't push it, we'll start to pull it. You know, one way or the other, let's get it done. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the conduit down. I don't, I don't like to take the box down. Just the conduit screws into the box. There's a one one strap on the wall. Take that down. Back out my conduit. And I'm trying to pull it and maybe drown somewhere in here. Because with this pipe and ducting and everything, it makes it tough in the corner. So I get this thing to, through there. Put them together. Because I think, you know, it could just be the pipe that's in there is twisted somewhere in the conduit. Which could be creating an issue. I don't know. Because when I put it down there... I just worry about one, now I'm worried about two, and of course that's complicating things, but at least I have access to all this stuff where I can try to figure out what's what and get it going. Well, the conduit is out, and I think this is probably my issue. I'm betting who I'm hitting right in here. It's getting really tight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spray down my soap and water, really spray it in here, get it nice and lubed up, and hopefully the wire will go through because the wire wasn't really twisted in here. I think it's just a tight fit. I think it will work. I believe it will work, but worst comes to worst, I think I need to cut about right here just to clear my ceiling. It's probably right in there. Might just cut it, but I think we can get it to work. There's really no reason for it to have this curve in it. I think it's just what I had. Because it's going to be better to put my new wire from this end, because otherwise I have to run the entire wire through this conduit over the other side. If I just push one end here, well, the other end has to run that way. It's going to be easier. It's going to be better. We're going to go for it. We're going to see. We're going to believe. And believing is half the battle. I mean, look at that picture. That says knowing is half the battle. I think believing is half the battle. All right, so that is my wire. I found an existing hole that is, like, right there. You can't see it. To get my wire in between the joists here, it'll go down there, come down right there, and that is where our stuff is going to be. Wasn't too bad getting it above the ceiling. Did find some mouse poop, which you never really want to see. But uh, yeah, got it above the ceiling, got these panels down enough just to where I could tack it against the joist. So here we are. Going to cut that hole, not sure how. Mount the receptacle, get the conduit. I don't know how the conduit I'm going to run through that. I think I'm going to go through the floor up all the way. I won't be able to strap it to the wall because I don't want to cut another hole into it. And I guess could my drill bit fit through a hole in the pegboard? Uh, it's a little tricky. It's going to be hard to do. I got my hole. 
this just barely fits in there. Still not quite sure how I'm gonna do her thing because it's pretty recessed. I'm gonna have to put some kind of plywood behind it just to bring out a little bit. I don't need it flush, but oh, is it not tall enough? I don't actually need it flush, but far back is just, if I put it against the wall, it's kind of far back, a quarter, a three quarters off, yeah, that would be work. I still don't quite know about the condo, I mean, I don't think I could feed it, I might could feed it from right here. I might have to go from the floor and just pull my table out. That is not a bad spot, made a lot of sawdust and mess here. Feed my wire, I guess I need to feed my wire through the condo, I was going to think my condo up. Hmm. Maybe I have enough wire to feed it down through the hole, put it in the conduit, put the conduit up, then attach this. I mean, why build a pretty extreme angle? I don't know. That's a this maybe just to turn a little bit. Maybe this thing's gonna front. Otherwise, how am I ever gonna reach it? We're getting there. It's shaping up. We're we're making progress. This is one of those projects where I'm just paying more attention to getting the job done than actually explaining how to. So let's take some step backs. Let's take some steps back and just picture so I ran I tied this into a receptacle on the side of my shop and that's only because it was an end run and it had a free spot and you can chain receptacles potentially infinitely uh, depends on the load really and I'm not adding any load to my setup here I still had the batteries plugged up on this now could my shop handle everything plugged in running at once no I only have one thing running at one time so the load factor not an issue like I knew it could handle it there's math involved I don't know the math right now it's been a while so I tagged on to a receptacle that's basically right across the room from where I want to put one. Had to go one joist over. So I tagged into that, ran up a piece of conduit. Because if you have, you can't have wire on your walls. You need conduit. You have wire in the ceilings. You can have wires in closed spaces. Not in open spaces. Not on the wall. Now when I ran this in above the ceiling, I did just put some staples. Just tack it to the joist. Because I mean, it really doesn't matter. But it's good practice to have it tacked so the wire's not floating around. It has, you know, it's, you can't like jerk on it or anything and create an issue. Uh, but you should have receptacle boxes or junction boxes or things that have strain loads where you can't jerk on things. I don't have any splices here, so I'm running from that receptacle all the way to this receptacle. Now, I put, I made sure to put a staple right at the joist before I come down the wall. Just, you're changing directions. I just want that thing tacked in. I want it in there correctly. Now, I don't quite know how I'm going to put all this in the wall, working kind of in the wall, behind the wall. You know, I may need to enlarge this hole. I think I may just put some trim around it just so you don't kind of have, I don't want to see this gap in there and... I don't know, maybe I space this thing even farther off the wall. I've got it three quarters off the wall. I think my screw, I found a screw that is big enough. Because, let's see, do I have any? So here's what I'm using to attach things to the wall. It's plastic anchor, great for CMU. It's got a screw. This screw is long enough for that anchor. Well, if I'm adding three quarter plywood, I need a longer screw. I happen to have a longer screw. It is right here. I could probably have like another quarter inch. So this thing is up like an inch. So maybe I do that to space it. My thought ultimately is maybe I'll just use cut some aluminum angle, just trim it out around the perimeter and just, you know, like double side ziggy tape around it. Just, it'll look nice, and that way you don't see like kind of a weird gap in there, which I don't want. So I've drilled my hole with a masonry bit. I'm going to tap that anchor in there. Now, how exactly I can get all this in there? I'm thinking this is the plan. The plan's all going to go awry. I attach the conduit to my receptacle. I pull the wire through everything, and then I just kind of angle it and push it and force it in the wall because this pegboard has some flex. I might kind of pull it out to get it in there. Once it's in there, screw it down. Uh, now, I won't be able to put a one strap on my conduit to the wall. I just, there's no way for me to reach it. Uh, my drill will not go far enough to do that. I'm not too worried about it. I think the screw here is going to be plenty. I've got the wire tapped at the top of the wall. So, that is the plan. I'm going to do all that. I'm just, and these anchors, just hammer them in and screw into them. It's fine. Or once the box is in there, I can wire up my receptacle. We're very close to this. It's taking a while. Just, Takes a while, like running things and running things through the ceiling. Takes a while. I'm about to this point, trying to get this in there. I don't think it's gonna work. You probably saw that coming a mile away. But I was just hoping. I was hoping it'd be easy, and it's not. I just, you know, this shelf prevents me from really getting a great angle on it. And I think I'm just gonna try to pull this whole table out from behind. You go up behind the pegboard. I think the pegboard stops. Oh, it stops about right here. This is the end of it, right in there. So I'm going to pull my table out and just try to go up behind there. I think that's going to be easier because this, I don't, those angles aren't going to work. Uh, my excuse is, it's late. And normally I am excellent at geometry. I mean, just the best you've ever seen. I mean, people look at me like, ah, oh, geometry. You know it. But not tonight. You can see that receptacle there. Now, it looks nice flush. 
it's not going to be flush. I don't know if I can pull the pegboard. Pull the pegboard a little bit, not a lot. So I did not move my table or any stuff because there's, check this out, a lot of stuff on that table. And it weighs a lot. And I don't want to move all that. I don't have a place to put it. So let's see. I think the stud for this is like right around in here and it stops about right there. So I just went kind of along the bottom. So we're close now. I'm going to screw it in and it's going to, see how far will it go back? I think like right in there. So it's a little recess. I don't necessarily mind that, that it's kind of back. And that way nothing's going to like fall down and hit it. Not that it would fall down, but I like that it's recessed a little bit. Whether I offset it three quarters of an inch or full inch, I don't know. I'm going to put my spacer in there and see what I think, what it looks like. I'm going to go from there. But, I mean, it's, we are close. I like this setup. Things are, things are going well. All right, so I've got it wired up. It is in place. The only thing I don't have is a cover plate. I'll have to buy that. I flipped the breaker. The brake did not trip. I mean, I wouldn't think it would, but you know, it didn't trip. That's always a good thing. Let's test. I always test it just to make sure it works. Look at that. That light is on. That light is on. And I mean, if one works, they both work because there's only one wire going to it, but it works. This thing's set. Just need to get the cover plate. The job is done. I can set my batteries and chargers over here. And it is uh, it's exactly. What I want is very convenient. Like all my batteries right here. I wanted that. Now I've got that. We're all set now. I just need to figure out how I want to organize all my chargers. Like, is there? I'm sure, there's a way better to do it. Right there. Look at my charger. I'm sure there's a better way to organize these. Right now, I'm just gonna set them kind of right here. And we're just figuring out. It might be. I've been going crazy with phone core and all my toolbox drawers. Maybe I just set phone core and kind of box out everything just so it's not slipping and sliding. And it's set. I don't leave my chargers plugged up. You know, I, yeah, it's probably not using much energy, but I'm like, ah, do I want to waste that, like, that penny? Well, I don't know if I do. I got too many chargers plugged up at one time anyway, so that lends towards leaving them unplugged. I mean, you can always get a charge strip. Don't really need it. Either way, I'm set. I think the only thing I might need to do is, like, create, like, some kind of slots for batteries. You know, if I get some more batteries, create some slots where I just kind of slide them on both sides. Good project. Nice quality life. I love that. I can just walk to my shop. Batteries are right here, right where I need them, because I'm always... Like the double A's and triple A's. I'm always coming in and having to go all the way across the shop, all the way back, having to go over there to see if the light, if they're on, the hill's charging or done. This is where it needs to be. This is where it is. Great spot. My charging station is finally complete. I got the cover for my receptacle. And I went ahead, I wrote what circuit is on just so if there's ever any question, I know. I've done that for all the circuits in my shop. It's just easier if you know what it is. Now in the rest of your house, if you don't want the receptacle, if you don't want the circuit written on the front, run on the back of the receptacle cover. That way, if you're trying to track down circuits, you know which is which. But all my batteries are here. I've got two batteries charging. I love this change I made in my shop. It's a great location. It's convenient. Everything I want it to be right here, ready to go. Now, did it take a little bit of work to get this receptacle here? Yes, it did. Is it worth it? Yes. I mean, it took me, what, like two days, two evenings to get this receptacle over here? Not that bad of a job. Now, in a situation where all of your wiring was in the walls, that would make things a little trickier, I mean, especially if you were in a garage where you had a drywall ceiling. I don't even know what you do. There are ways around it, not always easy ways around it. Luckily, my wiring was where I could get to it, so I was able to run this extra receptacle, and this is a part. Like, I love this spot. And this thing, this shelf, it's just a junk catcher. I didn't lose any space. Everything is here. Half of it, I threw away. Half of it, I just put where it was supposed to be. So here it is. I love it. It's perfect.